Say it again. So you guys put up with each, other, with each, each other's weirdness and craziness. That's okay. a good one, yeah. So best friends. They see you for who you really are. You can be yourself around them. You can toot in front of them. And they'll still accept you. You can do all these things, right? They got your back. You trust them. What if we treated people, everybody, like we treated our best friend? We still have bullying. I think you guys would, would still get in some fights, right? But you would always work it out because it, it's your best friend. I had this third grader. <laughs> His name was also Dominic. It's like that's a popular name or something nowadays. And after my assembly, he talked about his best friend. He got up on the microphone in front of his classmates, and he started crying, this little, this little guy. He said, my best friend's my best friend because they stuck up for me when I was getting bullied, and I didn't have the guts to. And, I mean, that's what a best friend's about. Seeing someone for their heart first, right? I was down in Texas Tech a while back. After the seminar, I'm just chilling in the hallway, kind of letting it clear out before I leave and just kind of digesting and reflecting on what was said. And I'm just chilling there, you know, and this guy bumps into me. He kind of hits my leg. He's pulling on my leg. He's in a wheelchair. And he asked me to kind of come down to his level, you know, this complete stranger. And I said, hey, he goes, he, you know, he, he wanted to tell me something. So I sit down right next to him, and he's in his wheelchair, and he says, hey, I have a friend. I said, okay, cool, man. That's, that's great. I do too. And he said, I have a friend, and they love me. I said, great. That's cool. And uh, he said, they love me because of this. Point to his heart. Not because of this. He grabbed down his wheelchair. They love me because of this. I always do this example. I'm like with the little uh, elementary kids and even in middle school, and I got a $20 bill, right? And I ask them, like, how many of you guys want this $20 bill, right? And every hand in the room is up. You know, and they're like, Mr. Peace, Mr. Peace, please, Mr. Peace, Mr. Peace, you're my homeboy. And I'm like, I just met you. And I'll crumple this $20 bill, I'll sneeze on it, I'll like jump on it, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, Brian James on it, right? And everybody still wants a $20 bill, no matter how it looks. If it's a little bit torn on the edges, you know, if it's crumpled. This one, this one little <laughs> six-year-old, she's like, Mr. Peace, I'll take that $20 bill. It has dog droppings on it. I said, okay. And it's funny because however it looks, it's still worth $20. But when it comes to people around us, right, they have to write image in our minds, and not the right size in our minds. You know, comparison, the quickest road to unhappiness. We do it all the time. And we separate people because of it. But we don't even really know them. We don't, we don't look for their heart first. So all of a sudden, they look a little different. They're a little crumpled, crippled themselves, and we're not as quick to accept. They're, they're not worth as much as some of our best friends. Right? They don't have the Aeropost A or the Abercrombie or the Hollister A or the Knight K, so we judge. See, we got to be able to see people for who they really are, right, as best friends. And 100% of the time, because I see too many 12% friends and 14% friends and 25% friends, and I'm only friends with you when it's convenient for me. I'm only friends with you as long as him, him, and him aren't around. I'm only friends with you as long as she doesn't come by. But that's where a lot of pain happens too, right? How many of you guys grow up in Michigan, right? In the winter months when that heater comes on, you're like getting dressed by the heater, and you're like, oh, yes, yes, got it. Yeah, and then and all of a sudden it goes off. You're like, no, 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 come back on, come back on. How about some of you ladies? How about some of you ladies where you're out in the sun and tanning and sipping on tea, iced tea, and reading a nice book? And you're just like, oh, the sun, mm, yeah. And, and then the sun goes behind the clouds. You're like, no, no. Oh, Mr. Sun, 
Sun, Mr. Golden Sun, please shine down on me. Please shine down on your name. Say it again. Taylor E. I had to change your name because I had to make it rhyme. But we know that happens, right? But again, it's you're either on fire for a friendship or you're not. Because when you're in between, when you're that 50% friend, that's when you cause a lot of pain. It's 100% friends. <laughs> yep, a little bit messy. So you guys can kind of see that. Are you, are, you, are you getting that, Grant? Are you zooming in there? Thanks. Great. Um, so, right, the ideal situation is that, you know, bullying, that certain actions don't happen because just like shaving cream, toothpaste, whatever you, I use for this example, once it comes out, it's very hard to reverse it. And I kind of compare that to like the toxic words that we spew on each other and the mean actions that we do to each other, that once they're out, they're so hard to undo. It causes a big mess. If we had, if we had more time and the right technology, yeah, we could get this back in there. But that's the thing. It takes time to heal. So the ideal situation is you don't let it happen in the first place. Now, obviously, that's not an <laughs> ideal world because we know that it happens, right? So I tell people, you know, you're getting bullied. You know, you approach the individual and you look him in the eye and you ask him to please stop. You don't say it where you're screaming or you're whispering. You say, please stop. Chances are they don't. So then I say, all right, then you got to get help. You got to get help. But then I got people, you know, say, oh, Mr. Peace, you're, you're, you're age younger, whatever it is. Mr. Peace, then I'm a tattletale, man. Come on. I can't do that. But then I got my friend G, short for Gina. Her freshman year of high school, multiple times walking down the freshman hallway, one of her friends, bigger guy, played football. 